Back in July, I put out a video explaining the situation about the active Falmouth Secondary Rail Line in Massachusetts being threatened by rail trail advocates who want the line removed. Since then, my channel has grown and I have gotten over 1,000 more subscribers, so I want to really drive in some points here, especially for those new viewers who may not be up to speed on this situation. Originally, a short video came out explaining the situation as well as information on how to contact state representatives and officials to voice your opinion that the rail needs to stay. This video is being made to expand upon the original videos and updates, as well as to remind everybody to write your emails and letters to the officials listed in the video description uh, to voice your opinion. If you don't have a lot of time available to write emails, you can copy and paste the template email supplied in the video description to get your point across. Now, let's get started here. So there's a group of trail advocates and their goal is to extend a pre-existing bike path from North Falmouth, MA to Bourne, MA. Uh, a novelty cause as some bike infrastructure is important and having connectivity for cyclists is a very good thing, especially in big cities. The thing is, this isn't Boston, New York, Chicago, nor is it Philadelphia. This is born Massachusetts, a part of vacation uh, destination Cape Cod. Home to automobile congestion on the only two highway bridges that span the Cape Cod Canal. Traffic is a major issue here. Uh, the canal bridges create a bottleneck when everybody comes over for vacation in the summer months, so traffic is backed up for miles at times. Now, even in the off-season, there's congestion because these bridges are old and need a lot of maintenance, so lane closures have to happen, creating another bottleneck. Both the Sagamore and Bourne bridges need replacing, and despite efforts to get money for that, uh, money has not been secured. It has gotten to a point where currently money is being sought for the Sagamore bridge only just to get the project off the ground. Currently, it is 2023, and the bridges were built between 1933 and 1935, meaning they're 90 years old. At the rate things are going, they'll be replaced sometime in the 2030s, if not later. So until then, and during the construction project, there will be plenty of traffic issues, and I don't think the new bridges will solve them in their entirety either. So what can be done? Well, there's an active railroad that runs onto the Cape and splits into two separate lines going to different destinations. Uh, the railroad includes a movable span across the canal, which is the third lesser known bridge here. This can be a problem solver and some folks are thankfully realizing that. Others have not. These people are trail advocates who want to remove the active Masta owned found at secondary rail line just to pave its route for a bike path. The active line runs about seven miles south from Canal Junction and Bourne to North Falmouth, where a United States government spur runs east into Joint Base Cape Cod. The Mass Dot line is operated by the Mass Coastal Railroad and has recently received significant investments and upgrades to keep the line going and in good condition. More money is allocated for work on this line, as noted in the Mass Dot capital improvements plan spanning the years 2024 to 2028. The line provides a critical connection for the defense of the country so the military can move heavy equipment to and from the base without having to close either of the road bridges over the canal. It is so important that it is a connector line as part of the strategic rail corridor network. While the base isn't a regular rail customer, they need the line intact for if when it is time to move equipment. As of September 2023, some preliminary work is being done on some of the base trackage to restore it to operation. While the line to the transfer station has been active and could be used for loading and unloading military equipment, a Y track and spur to a loading dock have sat overgrown. Uh, this Y and spur are actively being cleared of brush for future use as the military supports the continued use of the line. In addition to the base, there's another extremely important part of this line, an active freight customer who ships out hundreds of rail cars already and has a lot more potential. This customer, Cavosa Disposal, handles tons of construction and demolition debris from all over Cape Cod at the Upper Cape Regional Transfer Station. The transfer station, unique as it is the 
only one lichen on the cape takes in this waste, removes recyclables, and sends out what they can't reuse by rail. The debris goes out to out-of-state landfills like in Ohio, uh, Virginia, because Massachusetts has just about run out of landfill space. Uh, with new laws in place because of non-existent space to put all of our trash and construction demolition material, the operation of the transfer station has become a necessity. The Mass Coastal Railroad services the transfer station at least once per week, aiming to pull about 10 cards of material per week. Uh, these 10 carloads amount to about 1,000 tons of waste and about 50 tractor trailers taken off the roads, and more importantly, the old and traffic congested canal bridges. This is an extremely efficient way of moving waste material off Cape as one locomotive handles a string of rail cars that many trucks make up. Uh, this is a big win for the environment as rail transportation is more fuel efficient and has a smaller carbon footprint than many trucks doing the same exact job. Uh, the train also doesn't idle away in traffic three miles away from the Bourne Bridge just trying to get over. Now here's another important point about trucks. Prior to operating the rail transfer station, the disposal company did not have a place to transfer and sort material from roll-off dumpsters uh, to tractor trailers. This means each truck would haul only one dumpster full of material and would cross the canal by road bridge. Now each dumpster has about two tons of material in it, so to make up a 100 ton rail car load you would need 40 to 50 more trucks. This means each 10 car loaded train heading off Cape could have loads made up of 500 or more trucks. Another important thing to note is that because of recycling material like asphalt and concrete uh, right on Cape Cod, even more long truck trips are eliminated as previously it would go off Cape for either landfilling or sorting or go to another transfer station. Uh, so right there is enough reason to keep the line, but there's more. In 2022, Cavosa Disposal received an almost half million dollar grant to expand rail operations at the transfer station, increasing car loads and eliminating another 2,000 truck trips per year. This includes the potential operation of shipping municipal solid waste by rail, as well as other commodities, but time will tell what exactly ends up developing. With the new disposal laws and limited landfill space, municipal solid waste may be shipped regularly off Cape from the transfer station by rail again. Without the rail, a truck operation would take it off Cape on the roads and bridges and really would not be feasible without skyrocketing disposal costs for residents and businesses. Everybody would be affected by high disposal costs, so the more feasible rail option is obviously the best choice. Beyond uh, what a private disposal company may ship out, it is very possible that all of the local trash from the surrounding towns could go out by rail once the remaining landfill space is depleted. A 2022 Cape Cod Times article was quoted saying that using rail would decrease carbon dioxide by 2,000 metric tons annually by using rail instead of the current use of trucks shipping it to local landfills and incinerators. Uh, not only would it be more environmentally friendly, it would save a lot of money. The Cape Cod region could save between 15 and $34 million over the next 15 years by using rail. Uh, another quote from the Cape Cod Times article says the Cape could do that by bolstering current rail infrastructure at the Upper Cape Regional Transfer Station and the Yarmouth Transfer Station. Bolstering rail infrastructure is quite the opposite of ripping up a whole rail line to make it a walking path. Even after more C&D and MSW is moved by rail, there's still a lot more potential for increased freight traffic. Building materials like lumber, shingles, wallboard, vinyl siding, cement, fly ash aggregates, and more can move by rail. Fuel like propane can be shipped onto the Cape instead of trucking it on our highways just feet from other private automobiles. Rock salt for roads and other heavy commodity could move by rail just like it does in other places. Now that isn't the end of possibilities, but that's just some. Of note, tourist operations also take place on the Falmouth Line. 
The Cape Cod Central operates dinner trains on the line regularly during the summer on Fridays and Saturdays. While most of the trips run over the line as far south as Barlow's Landing in Pecasset, there's generally two special North Falmouth departures per year. During one of the 2023 North Falmouth runs, people who have never seen the train before were surprised to see the tracks in use, although they're used quite regularly for freight. Uh, this goes to show that the general public doesn't necessarily know much about trains or railroads, even if they operate quite regularly in their area. Beyond freight and tourist use, there's potential for regularly scheduled passenger rail service. But first, let's take a look back into history to see what we once had. The New Haven has a line to Woods Hole, Massachusetts, where the Marine Biology Laboratory is and where the ferry comes in from Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. Summers, trains of these cars travel regularly from Boston to stop at the ferry slip. But even when the vacationers have gone home, single units still provide the year-rounders with good service. God forbid we had anything like that today, right? Anyways, in 1872, the rail line was built south from Buzzards Bay to Woods Hole, connecting with the steamships that ran to the islands of Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. This was an integral connection to the islands and still is today, but without the railroad. The railroad operated both freight and passenger trains right to Woods Hole until 1959. Then passenger service was cut and what little freight still existed lingered on. Limited seasonal passenger service was resumed in 1960 and lasted until 1964 when the last train ran to Woods Hole. In the 1970s, the most southern portion of the line was turned into a recreational bike path, which preserved the right-of-way right to Falmouth Station, now the most southern point of active track at the time. In the 1980s, passenger service was resurrected by the Cape Cod Hyannis Railroad, but only as far south as Falmouth Station, because obviously the tracks did not... Uh, continue further south. Uh, their bus connections were made and shuttles brought passengers to the ferry. Uh, to make the trip off Cape to the islands, you would have to change mode of transportation every few minutes just to get through Falmouth, something that might not fly today when people want one-seat rides or more direct connections. While the CCH rail service was popular, state money issues resulted in its subsidy being cut and the train did not return for the 1989 season. Limited freight service to Falmouth only lasted another couple years before the line went out of service, but not abandoned. The Massachusetts Department of Transportation maintained the track to some extent over the next several years just to keep it intact for future use. Unfortunately, in 2008, the track from North Falmouth to Falmouth was removed when a pro-trail state rep slipped legislature into a bill to build a bike path in place of the track. Previously, the plan was to build a trail adjacent to the rail, but it was argued that it would be too expensive. So what was done was done to the dismay of pro-rail advocates who voiced their opinion on rail's importance for years. Thankfully, the silver lining of the trail is that it sits on property owned by MassDOT, and their lease can be terminated at any point if the rail were to be rebuilt. While the rail was removed to be an obstacle to restoring service, it isn't impossible to put it back when you have the proposed return of passenger rail to the Cape. In August 2023, Massachusetts State Rep submitted legislation to work on getting commuter rail service to the Cape. This plan would first bring service to Buzzards Bay and also study what it would take to get passenger rail on the Cape itself. Uh, this would serve the towns of Falmouth, Thorne, Barnstable, Yarmouth, and Hyannis. This would relieve congestion on the bridges and offer another mode of transportation during the bridge replacement project. Ideally, passenger service would have direct connections to transportation hubs so passengers aren't just dropped off wherever a train station can be built. So running rail to Falmouth Station in Woods Hole would be perfect. A one-seat ride off Cape direct to the ferry slip would be extremely beneficial and would probably work in today's world of one-seat rides and less transfers. While I don't want to get too ahead of myself, the official legislation actually calls the Falmouth line the Woods Hole branch line, but they don't elaborate on what that can mean. 
you could probably figure from the name that somebody has something in mind, even if it's just studying the feasibility of getting trains there once again. Either way, restored passenger rail service to Falmouth would secure the line's future, despite what any trail advocate can say or even try to do. Unfortunately, though, we aren't there yet. But if we stay on track with our advocating, we might be able to take the train on the Falmouth line again. One way to advocate is to make sure we are putting out factual information about the rail line operations, as well as current and potential future uses. To do that, we need to get some points across, especially ones that may debunk false information. To do that, let's see what trail advocates or anti-rail folks have said in the past. Of note, some have said that trash is a big issue, but you could just truck it off Cape on the new road bridges. Well, the thing is, despite that not being economically feasible, it is impossible because the new bridges don't exist yet. Until then, lowering the amount of trucks over the current bridges is a good thing to help with traffic congestion as well as wear and tear on the old structures. Another thing to ask is why put more trucks on the road that would go to an off-cape rail-served transfer station when you could just use the pre-existing ones that already have a rail connection. If you are trucking material to a rail line anyways, why go any further than the closest rail connection, especially when the stations to do that already exist on the Cape? Another important thing to note is that the trail group wants to remove the rail soon, even prior to the new bridges being in place. So what do we do until then if the rail was removed tomorrow? Sit in traffic with tons of garbage and debris that could easily be traveling on our recently upgraded rail system? Another important thing to note is that advocates claim that eliminating the rail line would only put a few trucks on the road per day. This is apparently justifiable because they claim people would use the path to commute, so it would take cars off the road somehow. As fine and dandy as that sounds, the bike path is planned to end in Bourne on the Cape side and not cross over the canal, so it really would only benefit very few people who are supposedly biking to work. Their plan is also flawed because it doesn't fight the bridge congestion where people actually travel by car to get to work. It also doesn't help with the tourist congestion, nor does it help answer the trash and waste disposal transportation issues. It really would have limited benefits and extreme immediate and long-term negative effects. Another whole part of this rail-to-trail argument is that it is impossible or cost-prohibitive to save the rail. The trail group argues that rail with trail is not possible as it could cost $80 million, involve private land taking, and require building bridges in coastal areas. Despite this, the reality is that the railroad right-of-way is wide enough to add in a path, so it really isn't impossible. Multiple locations on the Cape have rail with trail examples, like short sections in North Falmouth and Yarmouth, as well as the Canal Service Road that follows the Cape Main right from Canal Junction to Canal Electric in Sandwich. Another example is in Adams MA, where Mass DOT actually rebuilt a mile of track with an adjacent bike path. Coastal areas where tracks run through marshes can still accommodate the path as long as some adjacent bridges are built. Throwing away an important rail line just because you'd have to build adjacent bridges is just a terrible argument. Another important thing to note is MassDOT themselves has said previously, rail with trail is possible and actually have done some preliminary planning for that. Of course, the trail group isn't satisfied. Yet another point is that some other right-of-ways or route have been talked about for this trail. A bike path could occupy an empty state right-of-way along Route 28 to connect to the same pre-existing paths the trail group hopes to connect. They rejected that possibility. Some also believe the base has not used rail since World War II. That is very wrong. In fact, for decades after World War II, they continued to receive regular shipments of coal and jet fuel, among many other things. Even after those commodities stopped rolling in, special military equipment moves that happened right into the mass coastal era have used the rail line. 
Even if they haven't used it regularly, the base continues to support the rail line and says it has to stay. More recently, there was a claim that commuter rail on the Falmouth line is not possible. Well, about a week after I first noticed that claim, state representatives announced they are working towards having commuter rail to Falmouth, as explained earlier. Some say the current tracks can't even support commuter rail because they are only rated for freight service. Well, with any state project comes upgrades and investments, so similar to the South Coast Rail Project, the Falmouth and Cape lines would be brought up to the standards necessary to make reliable passenger rail on the Cape possible. I could go on about this, but those are some of the main points that needed to be addressed. Now, what do we do next? One thing we can do is start contacting state and local officials to voice our opinion that the Falmouth Line rail infrastructure needs to stay. Like it did at the beginning of this campaign, I have provided a template email that can be copied and pasted to be sent out to these officials at their contact info listed in the video description. You can expand upon what I have written, write your own piece, just be sure to make your voice heard. The template email reads, Save the Falmouth Secondary Rail Line. I am writing to support the preservation and continued operation of the Mass DOT Falmouth Secondary Rail Line in Bourne and Falmouth, MA. This rail line is an essential resource for Cape Cod and Massachusetts that needs to be retained for current and future uses. Rail transportation is the most efficient way to move heavy freight long distances and is also the answer to reducing traffic on the canal bridges. Without the line, truck traffic will increase on Cape Cod and the option for future passenger rail service will be eliminated. With commuter rail having a renewed interest on Cape Cod, it is even more important to make sure the rails are left in place. Removal of the line would set back Cape Cod and Massachusetts years and would be extremely unfair to Cape residents who want rail. Meanwhile, on the south coast, passenger rail is returning. East-west rail is up and coming and many of parts of the state have passenger rail, but Cape Cod is still without regularly scheduled year-round service. Eliminating active rail lines in 2023 only ensures traffic and congestion, something Cape Cod has more than plenty of. A compromise with the trail group can be made, uh, making the bike path a rail with trail option where the trail runs alongside the rail. Removing the line for a bike path is an extremely short-sighted proposal that will have immediate and long-term negative effects on Cape Cod and Massachusetts as a whole. I want to thank everybody for watching this video and for their continued support for the preservation of the Falmouth Secondary Rail Line on Cape Cod in Massachusetts. I find it crazy that in today's day and age we need to fight just to retain what rail infrastructure we have instead of pushing forward to expand and improve it. In 2023 we shouldn't even think about removing active lines. Even some out of use lines shouldn't be removed because of their potential future use and benefits. I will continue to keep everybody updated with videos, links, and news about the situation as it continues to progress, so stay tuned.